I was like, I got to do that. Okay. So a couple things. So we understand everything we did before what I'm about to show you is just getting an array of strings, which is our data set. And the array of strings look like uh, this, where it's like base GPT question, base GPT answer, new lines. Okay. This is a generic fine tuning script. It's using QLora. So it's, it's Laura, but it's a quantized, extra quantized version. Couple concepts here. So. First things first, where is it? Okay, so we create the data set. So we have like a cut point. So we pretty much just say get the first like 10%. Um, wait, what the? F oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, everything after the, the first 10% of things is the train data. Everything before is the validation data. When you ever you're fine tuning, you need to have your train and validation data because it's going to evaluate how good it is based on the valid data set. So the data set that you're not training on. Uh, that's just a general neural net thing. That's everything in machine learning uh, stems from how you you set up your data set. So we run this training loop. And oh, yeah. So the way we get the data set is we essentially just for every 1024 characters um we just chunk that out um for well for the input ids here i don't think they get that long so um oh yeah 1024 uh tokens i mean that's the token that's the context length for llama or no it's it's way more than that but we're only using that context length um but we don't have to worry about that because i don't think it's ever that long so this is the most important thing. So when you when you're creating a data set for fine tuning, you have to use where is it? The, well, this is the iterable data set class, but you can just use the general one. I by the way, I took this from Star Coders. Um, this is a re architecting of Star Coders fine tuning script. Star Coders are really cool. Um, uh, LLM for writing code. Anyway, so this is all the, the tr when you're using transformers, all they need is they need to have for every data set item, they need, it needs to be converted to this. So it needs to be a dictionary that has the input IDs and the labels. As you can see, the labels are the same as the input IDs. Typically labels are, are different. They're like more so like uh, almost like classes for them or, or uh, I guess whatever you want them to be sometimes. But um, the, so we tokenize, we use the llama tokenizer, which we downloaded above to, to to get for all of our words. So like when it said base GPT dash, whatever, that becomes a token. So that becomes like a, a thousand twenty four or, or I don't know why I use that same. It becomes like ninety nine or whatever. And then, so this tokenizer these inputs will become 99 comma 6 comma 40 thousand or whatever these are just the tokens so llama every model each uh thing is re is represented by uh an id so the word the would be like 24 or something so we convert so those are the inputs that we pass in the model every t as we're training so we run the training and it's super, the training loop is super simple here. We just get the model like this and we download it from, it's a pre-trained model. This is a, a hugging face class they give us. This is a super simple script, by the way. This could be way more complicated. Hugging face makes it so simple. We just load the, we download the model like this. We load it in the eight bit. We use the accelerator, which makes it so that we can use the GPU stuff across different platforms. We load it into 8-bit, meaning that really a lot of inf important information here. I know I'm going through a lot, but this is super important, quantization. So it quantizes 
the model. What that means is um, it reduces the floating point precision. I know it's a big concept, but like it's it's important. It's really important. So like if I do this, this is a Node.js uh, ter terminal. So if I do one divided by three here, notice how like how many numbers are here. It's like 16 numbers here. So that, that's a floating point of 16. So what that means is <clears throat> when numbers are stored in Node.js, they're only store up to 16, it, like memory that fits up to 16 bits. So, and each of these is a bit. So that's important because it's like one divided by three, that could be forever, right? but they stop it at that. So, so floating point is this big thing in computing where they have to figure out how much size do they want to give numbers. And most languages are 16 or 32, right? Um, when you're find when you're training a, an AI, part of the reason why the models are so big is all the parameters. When they say, oh, 100 million parameters, each parameter is going to be like a 16 uh, floating point number. So as it turns out, if you actually cut that 16 to just using the first eight or the first four for the for something even more intense, it's actually still pretty accurate. It loses some accuracy because it loses some information. It's an information theory thing. Um, so that's what's happening here. So like, I'm loading it into 8-bit. That's really important because that's what uh, QLora is. So real quick, we're using Lora. I'm going through a lot of stuff here. Maybe I should make this whole thing a clip. But uh, we're using Lora, which is a low-rank adaptation. Um, matrices, which is all of the uh, the models here, they have... It's, it's a matrix. So it has uh, each, um, like layer here is uh essentially when the forward pass happens when gradient descent hap happens it's it's a series of vectors that are series of numbers and it's in a matrix and when we get the uh these neurons and there's this concept in information and in, in linear algebra where you get the rank of a matrix and when you're getting the rank of the matrix, uh, you're getting the independent columns of it. So you're, you're, you're sort of finding the information that's unique and not repetitive. And the way, and the reason why that's important is in this low rank adaptation thing that they're doing, they're getting just the pure independent information. They're, they're pretty much compressing the matrices. Okay. So. They're compressing the matrices to be smaller. And here you can specify the ranks. You could say 16. And that's all that's it's doing. And that's so that the fine tuning is way more efficient. And then they'll say only uh, do the last three layers of the neural network or something like that and do a low rank adaptation of those layers. And then here, uh, where is it? Where, where is it? And then, uh, where's the bits and bytes config? Am I out of my mind or was there a bits and bytes config? Or is that down here? Oh no, I have that right here. Oh yeah, this is the one that's actually getting used. But so this does the quantization. So we actually do four bit quantization on the LoRa and that's called QLoRa, okay? I know it's a lot of stuff, but uh, you asked for it. I know it's a lot of stuff. No, I'm I'm a uh, I'm I'm 27. DJ Pressure. I look young. It's because I'm healthy. The more I feel like in 18 to 25, you sort of learn that like a lot of life is just making healthy choices. <laughs> um, knock on wood tomorrow. I just like die from cancer. <laughs>
Um, don't make a lot of claims. You will be proven wrong. Okay, but uh, tomorrow I just, my like fucking head blows up from like head cancer. All right. I think I can find Tate Tussle University, click some pull, and we just pull transcripts. That would help, Art. That that would help. See you next stream, bro. About to go fall asleep watching Baki. Nice. Yeah, dude. Baki seems cool. See you, DJ Pressure. Um... Oh, cool. So it looks like it's learning. Fuck, it's learning fucking slow. Ugh. 